Hello there, my name is Mark, welcome to the video. So today I'm on the wonderful River Ribble. It's uh, day two of the uh, river autumn season and I've just got down to this, uh, well, swim that's a bit of a jungle. So I'll show you the swim, uh, tell you about the techniques we're gonna use today and then we'll make a start. So this is the stretch of the wonderful River Ribble in Lancashire. It's a cracking river, I fished it for about the last sort of seven or eight years intensively although I've never fished this particular stretch before it's a new one for me so I'll tell you about the techniques and the baits we're going to use in a moment so this is the swim on fishing and really the only reason I've chosen this one not because there are any wonderful features I can see on the river itself but because there was just a gap in the very, very overgrown bank behind me. And what I've done to start off with is I've just had a quick lead around. So I've put a lead on and I've just cast around uh, from sort of here to about two thirds of the way across and just explored the stretch. And I've found that it's pretty uniform. It uh, drops away in front of me. And then for the most part, all in this area it's around about four feet deep and fairly level is the bottom so the gear i'll be using is i've got my uh, shimano bait runner 6000 size that's loaded with 10 pound line and that's on an old agility 12 foot barbel rod it's an avon style rod where you've got a quiver tip and also an avon top to it i've got the avon top set on it at the moment flow on the river and a bit of colour as well, which is good. It's been some rain overnight, so it's making conditions look absolutely spot on. The main bait for today is this stuff. It's uh, chopped ham with pork, and I've added various flavours to it. I've added uh, some smoked paprika that I like to add uh, to meat, and also um, sort of five spice, I think it is. I've also added a bit of sugar and quite a bit of salt as well, and they've been sat in the fridge overnight. So that'll be the main hook bait. And I've also got as a backup bait, um, some bread. So I'm gonna start off on the meat. And if uh, I get no joy on that, I'll try bread. And I'm using these as the hook link, nine pound uh, hook link, size 12. And they are a hair rig, I'll show you. It's got a, a push stop. Well, I think some other brands call it a quick stop and the idea is that you can use a little tool to push that through the meat and the meat sits on that hair. So just to explain and show you the rig that I typically use on the Ribble, this is obviously going back to the rod tip. I've got a small bead and a little ring swivel there that passes along that line. Another bead and I've got like a buffer bead and a clip and then onto that clip I add the weight. Now the hook link itself is attached to this ring swivel um, and the idea is that uh, if you kind of look at that it acts as a, as a basically a helicopter rig so when you cast it out you're not prone to the tangles that you can be on a conventional rig. This will rotate around the main line and land perfectly pretty much every time. Right so I'm ready to go. I'm going to just have a little cast out, not that far out in front of me. I have had a little cast around and found that the depth is pretty much uniform uh, for most of the way across here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of slack line and I'll pop that on the rest. And then engage the bait runner there and I'm ready to go. Now the reason I've not cast too far out is because what I want to do is I want to feed cubes of meat um, we're using a little magapult so if I cast too far out I won't be able to reach them so that's the plan put a few cubes of meat in and sit back and see what happens so I know that 10 pound line and 9 pound hook link do seem very very heavy but believe me the river ribble is an extremely snaggy river uh, there's lots of boulders and rocks on the riverbed uh, as well as other snags like fallen branches and trees so 
you know you do need to make sure your tackle is up to the job and also because there are a barbel in here that I like to fight and fight hard again heavy line is required for those so I'm just gonna put a couple of cubes in at a time I'm gonna feed just out in front of me uh, knowing that obviously the bait's gonna travel downstream so I'll just put them in a line out in front of me Oop, a bit random that put about eight pieces in to start with just to get some scent in the water okay so the river ribble is a, a river that I've fished extensively over the last few years I haven't been able to share with you uh, any videos because the club that I'm in doesn't allow you to shoot YouTube videos on their stretches, which is fair enough. So I've come onto a different stretch. Um, never fished it before, completely new, but I am aware of the species that are in here. And typically, they we're looking at chub, barbel, roach and uh, dace. There will be pike in here as well uh, and also perch but the target species for me and realistically to catch during the day is chub. Barbel tend to have got quite nocturnal on the river ripple so you've got to wait for the light levels to lower before you get a chance of one of those but you never know there's always a chance of a barbel um, but I would think that if I do get a bite on that lunch of meat, it's likely to come from a chub. And if I get a barbel, that'll be a bonus. Well, I'm just going to put a little taps on the rod tip. Now, there could be small fish just pecking at the meat, or there might be bigger fish like barbel and chub. Fishing for about 20 minutes, what's another tap, another tap, another one, another one, another one. So what I'm going to do, a little technique I've learned with chub, if it is chub, is to give them some slack line. Just give them some slack line, if it is a chub, what you find is that they'll take it a bit more readily once you give them a bit of slack. So if it is a chub, well it might not be. If it is, that's often the secret. Once you get a couple of taps, give them some slack. And if there is a decent chub on, it might hoop round. Well, it hasn't hooped round, so I'm wondering, it could be a small fish. It's going to strike anyway, I think. No, I think it's small fish. Small fish, that one here. Yeah, the, the bait's gone. So, something having a little go at it. I suspect it could have been a dace, perhaps, or several dace. Let's get some more bait on and have another cast. So, they're around about 20 minutes into the session, and they have a few little taps on the rod tip. Um, I thought they might develop into a perhaps a chub bite or a barbell bite, but chances are that they're probably dace just pecking at the bait. Do sort of rattle your rod tip. Well, the weather conditions, it's around about 13 or 14 degrees. Um, it's been, I think, about 11 overnight, something like that. And it's been fairly rainy overnight. Draw through lots of puddles on the way down here. And the sky is very grey and cloudy. But just now, we've just seen the sun trying to pop out and it seems to be warming up by a few degrees. Uh, the water clarity is dropping more clear. It started off quite cloudy when I first looked at it about half an hour ago and it seems to be very gradually clearing. Um, it's often difficult to get bites in very clear water so I'm hoping that the, the slightly cloudier water will help 
make fish a bit more confident and maybe allow us to catch one or two right, well we've hooked something uh, probably 45 minutes into the session do not feel very big uh, pulling a little bit um, I don't know it, it could be an eel could be an eel it's making some very eel like movements just need to get a bit closer to their water oh no it's a chub <laughs> it's a chub wonderful let's let that rest a little while and we'll let you have a look at it it's a good result felt like an eel <laughs> honestly so first fish not very big but very very welcome a lovely brassy chub big mouth on it falling to luncheon meat superb Raring to go. There it is. First fish. Nice little chub. So that's the uh, first chub in the net. Uh, probably, I don't know, under a pound anyway, but uh, really happy to see a river fish in my hands on day two of the open season. So Fingers crossed, might be on for a few more. Right, we've got something else on. It's uh, putting a bend in the rod. It's just shot off downstream. It's hanging in the current. It might be a chub, but I don't know. It's likely to be a chub rather than a Bible. It definitely feels bigger than the last one. Definitely hanging in the current there. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Hopefully, we'll get this one in. Let's see what it is. Let me get my, my net ready. Feels a bit of a lump. I just need to make sure my drag's all right. At this point, usually, if they're wanting to go away, I'll bolt off. And it does feel like a nice fish. I'm guessing it's a chub. Yep. Nice chub in the net. In a minute, hopefully. <laughs> Wonderful. That's great, that's chub number two. It came about five minutes after the last one. Give it a little rest and I'll show you. Right, you have a look at this, I've got uh, the unhooking that under me. And it's a bit tricky in this swim. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's a bigger one. Give a quick look. Whoop. Lovely chub. Look at those colours. Absolutely superb. Let's get it back. Alright, give me a little rest. Let's get it back. There he goes. Great. It's fish number two. Well, it was a rip roaring bite. I think it's another chub, but it was a cracking bite. Straight over. It's coming in. <laughs> but now this hiding it doesn't like it. Whoa. 
Pretty sure it's going to be another chub the way it's hanging there. Yep. Nice. Get it down closer to the river. Lovely. Take it upstream a little bit and then just sort of draw it back over the net. And there we go. Another chub in the net. Wonderful. Give another little rest and then show it you. Got the unhooking mat under me. Together with my net. It's poised there but there we go. Another lovely river ribble chub. Whoa. <laughs> Let's get it back. So I've been fishing for about an hour and a half and had three chubs so far. Uh, quite nice sized ones those last two. So I'm hopeful of a few more. The rain's starting to come down. Uh, left me probably in my car which is about I don't know, 150 metres down the bank there. So unless it gets much heavier should be alright with this sort of lightweight waterproof on. But that last bite was a real savage bite. I thought it was a barbell bite, it went smashed right over. No sort of taps or anything before it, just straight over. And uh, yeah, the, the chub look fantastic in the real sort of brassy colour to them. So chuffed to bits for those. I was a little bit concerned that uh, the hook was a bit small for the uh, pieces of meat that I'd cubed up but doesn't seem to be a problem there we go ready for the next fish well another Absolutely screaming take, and uh, the fish has bolted off right downstream, hanging in the current now. And I can't move it. <laughs> so whether this is either a very big chub or a bottle, I'm not sure. But the rain's sort of coming down. And let me hold up and everything here. But not long after the other one, absolutely screamed off. I'm guessing again it's a chub. Yep, another chub. Another lovely chubbly. Certainly fighting fit these fish. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. That's another one in the net. Absolutely wonderful. Whoa! This wanted to go even in the net. <laughs> well, that's another. That's another River Ribble Chub, that's the best one so far. Absolute lump there. I'm just trying my different camera here to try to get this in because I'm running low on the battery on the other one, so absolutely beautiful. Fabulous River Ribble Chub. Let's get it back. Give it a little rest again. There you go. It's right in itself. Let's get it back. Wonderful. Off to fight another day. So all I'm doing in terms of feeding is about every 10 minutes I'm throwing three or four cubes of meat in. Just a little bit further upstream from where my bait's landing. And so far the technique seems to be working.
After that last fish it's gone pretty quiet. I have continued to throw little cute pieces of meat in, three and four at a time. And I'm just going to continue to do that. I'm not going to go on bread just yet because obviously the meat's worked. And I've had four fish on it. So I'll just carry on. I'm enjoying myself, sat in the countryside. Uh, it's stopped raining now. So I've taken my waterproofs off. And it's really nice. So great to be back on the bank again. What I would normally do with chub is I tend to, once I've caught them, I actually put them back in the river, generally speaking further upstream, I'll actually walk upstream and put them into the river there, away from where I'm fishing. Now, the reason for that is that they can, if they put into the swim directly where you are fishing, they can spook the shawl. So that is a potential problem I've got today because I've got a really steep bank, probably 15 foot to climb up behind me and I'm not sure where I could actually drop down and put them in so I'm having to return them straight into the swim in front of me. But I've had four fish so fingers crossed it's not going to be too much of a problem. I was thinking about uh, chucking one across the other side or into the middle. I've got a screaming run, so. Another small chub. Keep it over the net. Whoop. Get it back. <laughs> first bite for a while. It's about the same size as the very first one I caught. Let's get it back. Well, that's uh, chub number five. About an hour have elapsed since the fourth fish, and I was just contemplating the cast further out, and it screamed off. It screamed off, even though it's a small fish. Absolutely bent the rod tip round. But I might as well see if there are any more on that line before I considered chucking it out again. Well, that came as a bit of a surprise after an hour without anything. So. I have cut feeding that line and uh, yeah, nice little chub. Another bait on the hook. Let's have another cast out over there. more pieces of meat out there. Just literally throwing these in. Great. So I know I'm being very greedy but uh, I wonder if I could just get one more. <laughs> He's being greedy that isn't it really. in that 
tip, a couple of taps on it now. Been a great day so far. Weather's been a bit up and down, but the fishing's been superb. Just what you want when you go back onto the rivers, isn't it? Look at this screaming run. I think it's another one of these smallish chub. I just cast, yeah, I'm trying to get in the, in the reeds here. Good one. Which is a habit of chub. Go straight for, straight for the reeds, don't they? Yeah, a little chub. Excellent. Another one in the net. So, that's another lovely chub in the net. Cut that one a little bit further out. Let's pop it back. Tangled in the net. <laughs> and the other way, Mr. Chub. There we go. Gone. So the river looks like it's back on its way up. There is a like a fallen tree just there, and it's actually been quite a way out of the water, probably about three or four inches out of the water. Um, but I can see it been submerged now so the river must be on its way up again I'm just looking in the margin here usually I put a little stick to uh, mark the the river height but I haven't done it today but yeah definitely looks like it's climbing up again That's a nice one. Oh, chub number seven. Beautiful. Whoops. Fabulous, fabulous fish. Gorgeous. Gorgeous chub. Great colours, great scrap. Pop it back. So there is something very special about rivers and river fishing. Um, they're kind of wild places really and forever changing. You know, the banks like here are very overgrown until obviously anglers beat the way down and make pegs out of them. And you never really know what you're going to find in a stretch. Obviously, fish can move unhindered for absolute miles. And although there are hot spots and known hot spots, 
you never truly know what's in front of you and there's a, just a feeling of a river being alive you know there's lots of movement and wildlife around it both on the banks and in the water and there is something very special about it but you know river fishing isn't easy the wild fish in a wild place and that means that it's not like fishing in a commercial where you can almost guarantee fish there are times when you're going to struggle you're not on the fish you know ideally you need to move or it's going to take time to attract them upstream to your peg if they're not already in there but I think that the rewards outweigh the, the difficulties so my advice to you if you're going to start river fishing for the first time is just travel very very light take as little gear as possible today I've just brought like a bank stick my rod I've got a bank stick for my camera obviously I have got a lightweight chair but there are many times when I'll actually not take a chair and I'll just sit on my unhooking mat and it just makes you more mobile and willing to move and explore the stretch if you take too much you get to your peg you're absolutely shattered you're sweating and it's pretty unpleasant before you even cast in and then if you're not catching and you've given it your best shot on a spot then my advice always will be to move and you're less likely to move if you're carrying lots of gear so traveling light really is the way to go when you're river fishing well so I've got another one on just keeping low on holding in the current it's going to be one of those better quality ones I think fighting quite well quite a bit of a flaw on here so I just hang there and I struggle to bring them up and this is quite a powerful rod so just going to take it easy another chunk just got to make sure they don't go into these reeds at the side Feels like a nice one. Come out from the reeds, Mr. Chubb. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. There we go. Nice. It wasn't as big as I thought, but it's strange that you get in that current and uh, you struggle to get them out again. Excellent. That is chub number eight. Well, that's another one in the net. I thought it was much, much bigger the way it hung there in the current. But uh, yeah, nice fish. Looks a bit of an old warrior. Let's get it back. So it's getting towards the end of the afternoon and I'm going to be making tracks shortly. Um, just wonder whether I can sneak a last fish out before I go, but that is, I know, very greedy isn't it? Just having another last cast and then another last cast. But it's really been great to be back on the rivers. I hadn't realised how much I've missed it to be honest. And yeah, I'll be certainly back trying different things. I'll be uh, coming on trying the uh, the stick float and the waggler chasing bags of dace and roach so hopefully I'll get some of those on video for you and there's always chance of more chub and even the possibility of a bible or two so yeah exciting times So thank you so much for joining me on the banks of the River Ribble I hope you've enjoyed the video watch out for more videos but for now, 
tight lines. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much.